can we can have our seats. Um, greetings, church. Um, uh, it is really an honor and a privilege to be before you today to serve you, and I want to say thank you to Dan and team for the invite. Uh, it is indeed an honor uh, to serve you all today. When uh, when Dan invited me to come. I have to be honest and say, we, we already, I was already kind of, I had a commitment somewhere else, I still do, but you see, when we work at Alpha and we work with young people, and we work with youth leaders like Tata, when we meet them, we say to them, we are here to serve you, we are here to work alongside you, so I couldn't turn this opportunity down to come and serve him as we serve this generation. Um, so I, I really, really appreciate the time and all the time. I'm definitely, uh, I'm, I'm tall at stage, but I'm definitely going to be short today. But I hope we'll be able to get um, the message of today. Um, um, as we look into the theme, pressing towards the mark in faith. Um, let us pray. So we thank you for this time. Oh, 
I would say fortunately have, have a chance to actually sit down with them and, and have a conversation and wrestle with, with these issues. Some of the questions that a lot of young people in South Africa are asking is, is faith relevant? Is faith relevant? They have choices. You know, I am, I am a trustless kid, I grew up in church all my life, and there was a point in my life where I was going to church, you know, from Monday to Monday, I would, I would run away and go to my to my grandmother, and we would still go to church. Amen. I know some people can relate, but and, and the thing is, according to to the life now and, and, and the culture we are living, there's so many choices that a lot of young people have. And I always say to my wife that I'm glad that I was not given choices. I grew up in the day. My grandmother will say, I am working my house. Everybody's going to church. And if I'm falling, you will just wait outside my house and you will meet us when we come back. And it didn't feel right. I know a lot of young people can relate to it. It didn't feel nice. But oh, I'm glad I had no choice. How many of you know that free will is actually not good for us? Having too many choices is, as, as, as a young country, as, as young people, it's actually not good. But it is great if we use it in the right context. So some young people in South Africa are saying, how can I love Jesus when it looks like people who claim to love him are perfect and are not? How do I relate to people who look like they're perfect, but I'm not? Another question that a lot of young people are asking is authenticity in faith. Do you really care about me? If I tell you about my grandmother who's sick or my aunt who's sick, the next time you see me, the first thing you say to me is, when are you coming to church? Instead of you saying, how's your grandmother? How's your aunt? How's that going? How can I pray for you? A lot of young people are saying, we want conversation. We want community. It is great for you to to stand and, and preach at me and preach to me, but it's nice for us to meet on a Wednesday and so I can ask you questions. See, when I was, when I was, uh, when I was in Bloomington, I grew up in Bloomington, and um, as I was going to church with my family, I assumed, I want to say I assumed, that if I could ask questions about my faith, I would maybe be looked at as a person who's not, who's maybe, who's not respectful. But only when I go to Cape Town and I go to study and I had to read the Bible for myself, I wish I had community, I had conversations with my friends who would actually um, give, me, give, me, give me good advice and maybe we can wrestle together with the word. Who is Jesus? How do I pray? How do I read the Bible? And I remember when I was in Cape Town and, and inviting my, church, my, my, my friends to church, um, my friend CJ told me, you know what, brother, I'm, I'm actually not coming. Eventually he told me, I'm not coming. And I asked him why. He was like, what, what you are presenting to me, I already have it where I come from. What he meant is that when he goes to places, uh, you know, a lot of young people know these places. When he goes to other places, everybody knows them by name. Yeah? When he gets to that place, everybody says, hey, Ta, hola. you want one? You want two? Huh? Let me buy you three. Let me buy you four. And he says to me, but what you are trying to invite me to, when I get in there, I can sit in the corner and nobody will come to me. Nobody will speak to me. Nobody will say hi to me. People will just be with their friends and be kumbaya and the church is over and that's it. So we need to make a lot of young people realize that we are the community. We are part of this community and we want to have conversations and genuine, authentic conversations with them. So I have a question for you today as a young person. What comes to mind when we say it is time to press towards the mark as a young person? What comes to mind when you say it is time for you to take your faith journey seriously? I want to present this to you and say Matters of faith are matters of an inward man and an outward man. 
What do I mean by this? We need to acknowledge our imperfections. When you look at Apostle Paul, he begins to look at himself and say, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. I have not arrived. I have not, I have not reached a place where I am missed and know it all. As, as, as Temple, and, and I get to work with so many young people, and I'm the, you know, South African Alpha Youth League, um, um, and I represent the, 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 the Alpha brand nationally, and sometimes in Africa, I never get to a place where I feel like I know everything. I know that there's a person out there who knows more, who I have to learn from. So this calls for humility. Apostles Paul's humility is powerful and is a reminder for all of us. No matter how long we have worked with Christ or how much we have achieved, there is always room for growth. It calls for humility. It calls for us to have a teachable spirit. Sometimes that's our biggest challenge. We need to continue to seek deeper relationship with God and acknowledging that our journey with Him has to go. We never get to a place, as we press towards the mark, we never get to a place where we think we know everything. Another thing about the work we do with the youth is our vision as Alpha is we want to serve the church in their mission to help you to discover Jesus and have a relationship with Him. And how many of you know that um, it, is, it is possible for you to know of Jesus but not have a relationship with Him? A lot of our friends, I'm sure maybe today or yesterday when you said I'm going to church, they said, hey, umbe. Yeah, yeah umbe. Yeah, no, they're not coming. Uh, when they have problems, they are saying, hey, my friend, can you please pray for me? Yeah. No, 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 they, they are not coming to your church, but when they need help, they know there is Jesus. They know there is a God, but they don't have a relationship with him. Some of us who are in church, we can know of this Jesus, but we might not even have a relationship with him. If Apostle Paul acknowledges the need for him to have a deeper relationship with Jesus, how much more of me and you? If Apostle Paul, who has done so many things for the gospel, how much more of me and you? I mean, if I was Apostle Paul, I'm sure I'd be like, no, I don't need it. I don't need, I don't need to press towards the mark. I have done one, two, three. I've worked this Christian journey. I know so much. I've been a Christian for 15 years. I do not need any other thing. I've arrived. But Apostle Paul acknowledges that he needs to have a deeper relationship in Christ. And it is easy for us to be comfortable in our faith, isn't it? It is easy for us to get used to things. It is, it is easy for us to, to have a spirit of familiarity. We get used to church. We are not late. Amen. We no longer read the Bible. We no longer pray. We no longer have a teachable spirit. Can you remember those days when, when you were new in your faith? Do you remember the passion you had? Do you remember how you were so so much in, in love and, and in this in this bubble of, of your faith and you wanted to tell your friends about it? And, and, and all of a sudden, in our Christian journey, we get to a point where we are so familiar with, with our faith that we don't even want to share about it. Everybody knows. I always tease my wife and say to her, I'm sure when we started, you know, getting to know each other, you couldn't tell, you couldn't wait to tell your friends about this thing. Amen? Amen. Yeah, those who are married know. But, right? And, 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 but how much more of us who we have found this love of Christ. We have found this light. We have found this unconditional love. But we are attentive. We, we are definitely are not passionate enough to share about this, this life we have or this faith we have. And, and for me, it's to not make you feel bad. For me, it's to challenge you and say, can, can you go back to that passion? Can you seek that passion again? Can you seek that in your heart, that, 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 that passion you had? And, and I'm here to, to maybe put it to you and say, you can have that 
by having a deeper, by pressing towards having a deeper relationship in Christ. He says, forgetting what lies behind, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind. Forgetting what is behind. I have a question for you today. What is holding you back? What is holding you back? If you read the history of our Apostle Paul, you will realize that this man is not a perfect man. This man has done so many things, even against the gospel itself. But he says, I have decided. I want to leave whatever that is behind. I am not looking back, but I'm pressing towards the mark. So what is holding you back? Is it failures? Is it your sins done in the past? Is it your regrets? Or even achievements? How many of us know that we can literally stay in the glory of the last year or of, of, of yesterday? How many of you know that we can actually literally bask in the atmosphere of what we did 10 years ago? Even that can hold you back. Behold, I'm doing a new thing, says the Lord. Apostle Paul emphasizes the importance of letting go of the past because he, has the, he knows the past and he has decided in his heart to move forward in our faith. We must release these burdens and not allow them to define our present future. We must release all these regrets, all these failures, all these past burdens and sins that are holding us back. What is this goal that Paul speaks of? Young people, is it a car? Is it, is it pressing towards the hustle? One thing, one thing about the youth of today is that everybody wants money and they are willing to do anything and everything to get it. And how many of us know that the end thereof, most of it is death? They are willing to please the world. The hustle of this world has made the youth to press towards fame, to press towards money. And, and, and the honest truth is that it is because of the pressures of this world. The pressure to have the latest iPhone, amen. Yes. amen. The pressure, your goal is to have the biggest car, the biggest house. The pressure to get married, that the lady says, amen. Mm. amen. Huh? The pressure of the society to look a certain way. The Easter life. Young people, you were born, I mean, you, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong for you to wish you can have all, all of those things. But if that's the only goal to press towards, that's a selfish goal. Young people, you were not born to wake up, study, get a car, get a house, and die. You were born for a purpose. And you can only get that purpose from having a relationship with the purpose giver. I'll repeat it again. You were born for a purpose and you can only get that purpose from having a relationship with the purpose giver. From pressing towards the mark in faith. So what is the goal that Apostle Paul is talking about? I've got news for you. It's nothing tangible. It's not an earthly price. It's not a price that you can get on this earth. It's a heavenly price. Amen. Amen. It's a heavenly price. And despite the challenges and obstacles we face, Apostle Paul says, I press towards the mark. If your goal is to get the things of this world, you will get them. If you work hard enough, oh, you will get them. But how many of us know that they don't last? Psalm 127 says, unless the, world, unless the Lord builds a house, the work of the builders is wasted. Unless the Lord builds a house. When it comes to decision making, many of us will know the difference between the person who has a relationship, who has a life in Christ, and the person who is not. How many people have died doing the wrong things? How many people have ended up in prison doing the wrong things, doing the things their way? I've got a strategy. I've got a plan. I've got an idea. I, I know I'm, I'm a hustler. How many of us know that as much as we will reach the things that we want to reach in this world 
if we reach them outside the will of God, we are going to have to keep them outside the will of God. Apostle Paul says, I can do everything. I've been around, but I also know that I'm human. I also know that I'm not perfect. I need guidance. I need a divine guidance. And I choose to pursue a life in Christ. I cannot follow my heart. My heart is deceitful. Oh, my heart is deceitful. I follow the word of God. I follow the voice of God. If we follow the voice of God, it will guide us in places that we should go. The people you associate with. And it is impossible to follow the voice of someone you do not know. You cannot say, I follow the voice of God, but you don't have a relationship with him. That's impossible. Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. My sheep know my voice. So if you're going to follow the voice of God, and here's the thing, I'm talking this from experience. If you, if you have a relationship with, with God, there are places that you are in, young people, and something tells you, I am not supposed to be here. Yeah. There are places, there are friends you have, and, and, and the Lord tells you. It's not, a, it's not a hunch. It's not an instinct. It's the Holy Spirit. I am not supposed to be here. Yeah, but you are there. You are there. You're not going anywhere. Because why? Not. It's, it's vibing here. A long story short, there's a story of a young man who he was sitting at home and he had decided Friday night I'm going to be at home, I'm going to watch movies and play games. But his friends called him, hey man, we've got money, we've got, you know, we've got a plan, let's go out. But he refused, like something in him decided, no, no, I don't want to do it. But eventually they came through, um, I'm always watching the story, they came through, they picked them up, they went to this apartment, and when they got there, it was amazing. You know, as it usually is, um, there were things to drink, there were the people to see, the vibe was great, but in him something told him, you have to go home. And while he was still sitting there, he literally, literally decided to just stop thinking about this, 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 you know, having this thought to go home. And, um, and just at the 11th hour, he, he remembered he was trying to cook when his friends came. And he was like, yes, if I, if, I, if I left that stove on, the house will, will definitely be on fire. And this is not my house. And he eventually left. But when he goes out the apartment, when he gets to the lift and he goes down the lift, when he leaves, there were two guys coming to the lift and going up. And when he got home, immediately got a call that... Everybody who was in that house, those two guys got in and shot everybody and everybody died. Now, how many of us have, have, have the Holy Spirit telling us everywhere we go? How many of us ignore that thing? How many of us hear what, what, what God says in our lives? Sometimes it's not even about something bad that's going to happen to you. You are in a taxi and the Holy Spirit says, person that Jesus loves them. Maybe you are sitting at home, you see somebody pass by and, and they stay in your area and you, and you have a feeling in you to say, greet that person. Ask them how they are. How are you? How's, how's your life? How can I pray for you? How many of us have that? We call it an inch, but I am here to tell you that's the Holy Spirit. And it's because when we pursue a relationship with God, we follow the voice of God, and we are able to make sound decisions. But not only that, we are able to have the boldness to tell our friends about Christ or about the faith we have. So if, if you are here today and you didn't hear anything, please leave with this. So maybe you're asking yourself, well, how do I press towards the mark in faith? First thing is be humble. Be humble. You will never reach a point where you think you are right. You never reach a point where you think you cannot be taught anything. You never reach a point where you feel like I can, I have, I have grown, I've reached my spiritual growth in, 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 in life and, and I cannot, I cannot read the Bible anymore and I cannot learn anything from the Bible. Be intentional. The same passion you had when you started 
it's time to do and commit again. Be involved. Don't idle. If you idle, you die. Focus on the ultimate prize. The ultimate prize is not what's on, what's on earth. The ultimate prize is a relationship with Christ. And if you do this, you'll make rational, good, guided decisions as a young person. And the last part is don't look back. Don't look at your past sins. Everybody has sins. We've all fallen short of the, of, of the glory of God. We all, need to, we all need His love. Jesus died for us. God has forgiven us. It's time to look forward and not dwell in the past. Or even in the past glory. There are new things that God wants to do in our lives. There are new things that God wants to do in your life. This reminds me of Jesus himself. He doesn't only want you to pursue him or a life in Christ, but he pursues you too, friends. Jesus pursues you too. I would like to remind you that he lived the life we should have lived. He died the death we should have died so that we can be free. And because of that, Apostle Paul says, consider pursuing the mark, not for your own benefit, but for a greater purpose. Amen. Amen.